Rub up your engines! Okay, Americans used to have love affairs with their station wagons when I was a kid. Well, they're still going. They might not make them anymore, but they made them so well. Guy bought this one a few years back. He takes it everywhere. It's his daily driver. And it's a Torino, just like Clonisha movie, Grand Torino, only it's a station wagon. And I mean, you think this thing is big? This isn't even the big version of it. <laughs> Get those seats down, man. <laughs> they put a kayak in here. These things are solid made. And of course, they always rot a little here, but it's not all that bad to tell you the truth, considering it's lived in Massachusetts. Now, for those of you that don't know, these are called hubcaps. <laughs> Make a nice sound. Steel rim. Hubcaps keep the lug nuts from rusting. And really, as old as this thing is, 1971, check it out. They actually made frames in those days that hold up. And this is a Massachusetts car, hey. They're not even riding out here. They're big, they're heavy. But on the highway, this thing gets 18 miles a gallon with its giant V8 and a three-speed automatic transmission. As we look under the hood, and yes, it wobbles a little now. Springs are getting a little bit worn, but it still stays on. Yeah, one of the better V8s Ford ever made, 302. 302 cubic inch, you can see oil's leaking, but it still runs quite well, goes down the road, and check it out. You gotta have nerves to drive this car. Does not have power brakes. <laughs> Two neat stinking power brakes, you know? A Flintstone mobile. You can stick your feet out and drag them if you wanna slow it out faster. You can see it does have massive power steering. Now, of course, the air conditioning's long gone. Here's the pulley in. Took the compressor off, that's long gone. No Ford's gonna last that long. The compressors would long ago break, but hey, Massachusetts, it doesn't get all that hot. And it also has something most people don't know about. Inside here are drum brakes. Yes, drum brakes. I had a 1970 Maverick. It had drum brakes too, and they were crappy. <laughs> if you slam the brakes on hard, you didn't know which way the steering wheel was gonna turn. But if you take care of them and do them over, they work good enough. I mean, you need disc brakes because they don't fade when you keep slamming them on back in the days. No SUVs at all. People had station wagons. You could fit your whole family in them. Bench seats, if you know what they are, they come bench seats because they look like a bench. You put a cell phone in here and plugged it into the cigarette lighter. And you can see the old dash is not quite what it used to be, <laughs> but it's still there. No airbags in these babies. You get in the wreck, your head's gonna get some serious damage. But you have seat belts even back then, then we'll start her up. Check that out, starts right off. Look at that, and you put it in gear. Thing idle, smooth as can be, as old as it is. Now, there's a big debate going on with the owner here. He doesn't know if it's got 67,000 miles, 106,760 miles, or even 300,000, but I do have to say, it may only have 100,000 miles on it. It once had AC, max AC, but like I say, the compressor's gone. The heater still works. You can see he's got his USB plugged into it. Let's see if the horn blows. It's got, it sounds a little weak, but it blows. <laughs> and the radio. Okay, the radio's long gone. <laughs> Nothing happens with that radio. As we look back from the front seats, look at all that space. Hey, you could probably get two or three coffins in there if you wanted to. <laughs> and check it out, the obnoxious buzzer still works. <laughs> and it went off and we closed the door, hey. Now, he mentioned the fuel gauge broke a couple days ago, but it used to work. But, I mean, really, this thing still runs really smooth. You can get parts for these things. There's so many Fords. Back in the day, everything was interchangeable parts. Simple to work on. You don't have to worry about a power booster. Doesn't have one. Plain old shock with the bolt at the top and the bolt to the bottom. And check this out. They still had metal radiators. Now I realize when this car was made, Mercedes-Benz actually started using plastic. But Ford was still using metal ones. Take it for a spin. Now that's one solid hood. It's the old AT205 reseal to work. Uh, things have a tendency of leaking. This does help these old cars. And of course, there's no backup camera. Oh really, look how smooth that thing is. 
V8 power and the steering wheel, of course, has a little bit of play. You notice I'm turning it, but it's not really moving the wheels much. You got to do big turns in these babies. I'm growing a little. Typical Ford. <laughs> Here we go over the giant bump. We don't have anything to break off, so we won't go too fast. Although it really doesn't look to be that rusty. Okay, well, now, the owner just told me it came from North Carolina. And that makes total sense, because my father had one, and when it was eight years old in Niagara Falls, we used to play ice hockey in the back seat, because it had so many leaks, and you could see the road going through some of the holes on the floorboards on the bottom. So, yeah, if you're looking at one of these, you can find one from the south. Yeah, this thing didn't spend its whole life in Massachusetts. <laughs> you can really tell. And of course, it's all the things you want. These old cars did kind of bounce around. They're more like land yachts than they are cars. You sail them. You kind of point at something in the distance <laughs> and head towards it. Don't do any tight exactly. maneuvering. They're, exactly. they're not made for tight maneuvering. And good thing, nobody's coming. So, here we go. But it does have a V8 engine, which of course has torque. Hey, it's going, you know. It picks up and going. And this three-speed transmission shifts really smooth. It's only got three speeds to go through, so there's less shifts, right? But, hey, I feel quite comfortable in it because I grew up in these things. So I know, you don't drive down the road tight. You look ahead, you know. We're pointed at the lights now. We're headed northeast now. We'll keep a bearing, now we're gonna make a turn, so we'll get prepared for the turn. And I'm gonna take a big chance, I'm gonna pull in front of this giant truck. And we made it! Look at that! <laughs> hey, this thing's pretty heavy, you know, it would've been a good paddle if we ran into each other. <laughs> now, I really am guessing that this thing's got really like 106. The bearings don't make any noise, seems really structurally sound. So, I guess people probably just didn't drive it all that much down South Carolina. And even though it's not an outrageously powerful V8, it's got a lot of torque, so it moves around. He's not going to put it to showroom floor. He's not going to get it all down, painted, all new, everything on it, white wall tires. No, he got it as an everyday driver, and he likes it. It mellows him out, and hey, you got to admit, even though it doesn't have all the safety features, airbags and all that stuff, lane assist crap, right? This is one big heavy vehicle, relatively low to the ground. You're pretty safe driving this thing around. Somebody runs into you, their car will probably crumple up and this thing will still be rolling down the road. A distinctive Torino front end on it. You know, it's still a station wagon, but it's a pretty stylish station wagon for something that was made way back in the day with real headlights, no plastic crap that you have to polish because it fades away. It's all made out of glass. The chrome is still in decent shape. Guess what? They didn't make these with catalytic converters. You don't have to worry about that stuff clogging up. You don't have to worry about emissions things because numero uno, they're almost all going to be excluded because they're so old. Most states, it's 25 years or something. But even if there was, it didn't come with a catalytic converter. <laughs> so they can't force you to put one on it. Hey, you get something old like this that it was a one owner. He bought it from a guy in Massachusetts who imports them from the south. Guy must go to sales, estate sales. But, hey, for a little bit of money, you get an everyday driver that's going to just keep going and going. All you got to do is put snow tires on in the winter. Got so much weight, it's going to be able to make it through, right? No computers, no 10-speed transmissions to go wrong. I mean, I doubt it has two or 300,000 miles on it. It just runs too smooth and shifts too smooth. And really, when you think about it, if you can get 17, 18 miles a gallon on a highway, that's not horrible gas mileage, you know? I've seen some of the modern SUVs get worse than that with their all-wheel drive systems and big tires and all the nonsense that they throw on them. So, hey, they're never gonna make these things again. He bought it and he said since he's owned it, it's probably worth about three grand more than what he paid for it. And he bought it five years ago. They don't make it anymore. You can see it's still solid and it still runs. So, hey, if you're looking for a station wagon to carry your family around or maybe you want to relive the past or scale down your lifestyle, hey, maybe look for an old Torino station wagon or not. There's a bunch of old Grand Torinos still around. Even if they rust, 
the steel's so thick they still go down the road you know the frame like my father's the frame was still there the body was almost completely gone but you could still sit in the front seats the back seats your feet would drag on the ground but you could sit in the front seat uh, and this one's not even close to that so hey don't poo poo some of the old stuff that people used to make that used to run quite some time and still going down the road, what? 50 something years later, it's still rolling. Even though it doesn't have power brakes, I didn't feel odd driving it around. They're not that bad. Drum brakes, when they're set up right, work perfectly fine. And this one is in good shape. You don't have to go like a lot of guys, oh, I'm gonna convert it, put a booster on, put on disc brakes, blah, 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 blah. Hey, you're not racing this thing. It's an everyday driver. Just leave it alone and drive it around. And for Hey, a few thousand bucks? What are you gonna get today? A set of tires and rims for a modern car? You get the whole car with this thing. So if you never wanna miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.